One of the benefits of my job is that listeners do me the truly excellent service of curating the internet's stupid and presenting it to me on a pretty regular basis. And as I was considering what to write about this week, a piece of dumb came across my desk so brilliantly idiotic that I just had to talk to you about it. See, it was a post on Christian Reddit in which the poster claimed that the word fundy is an anti-Christian slur and that they, quote, would no longer engage with anyone who used a slur, just like if they had called a black person the N-word, end quote. And as I lay there on my office floor, crippled by the sheer dumb fuckery of what I had just heard, I knew what I wanted to talk to you about today. See, here's the thing about slurs. When you say that something is a slur, the word that comes to someone's mind is the N-word. I mean, yes, it's not the only slur, but it's the slur of such historical significance and contention that it's what you think of when someone says the word. When a black person hears that word, the unimaginable weight and history of racism falls directly on their ears in a way that white people literally can't conceptualize. And that is the problem. You see, because white people literally can't relate to a word representing hundreds of years of their slavery, or a police state designed to murder them, or racism against them that pervades society even today, when we hear a word as a slur, we think a slur means a word that hurts my feelings. More importantly, slurs represent something very different to white people, in that it is almost exclusively a form of social power we don't have. Now, we've all heard the various Uncle Franks in our lives wondering aloud why they can't say the N-word, but these rappers can. And that's asinine, but it's also indicative of one of whiteness's most dangerous aspects, that there's literally no form of power, no matter how minuscule, we'll tolerate not having. And when you combine this misunderstanding of what a slur is with a desire for the perceived power they bring you, you get white Christians making up slurs like Fundy. Now, maybe all this is old news to you, right? Christians have been finding shit to be offended and oppressed by since they were not being fed to lions in the Colosseum. But I know my audience and your empathetic people. Many of you, like me, had a lot of growing up to do over the years, and when someone tells you something's a slur, you're inclined to listen. Maybe you, like me, have been wrong about that kind of thing before. And after all, what could the harm be of being aware of someone else's feelings? Isn't it better to err on the side of caution than dismiss someone's hurt? Maybe. But maybe we shouldn't let Christians and anyone else who steps up to the plate with a made-up slur diminish the meaning and power of those words. Maybe a slur isn't something a person should be able to claim as a Hail Mary in an internet fight. Maybe a slur is a powerful earmark of history and pain that you and I should count our lucky stars we can't relate to rather than coming up with our own real quick to gain background in the pain Olympics that I gotta admit only white people seem to sign up for. And maybe if Christians like that poster on Reddit had to grapple with what it means when the things that hurt your feelings are just that, they might understand what I think is one of the hardest bits of social justice to get your head around. That social justice is not about personal discomfort or pain. That personal misfortune, no matter how bad, is not and cannot be the same as systematic inequality and should not be treated as such just because you'd like to be taken seriously. Look, there are times and places throughout history when it has been hard and even deadly to be a Christian. Nobody's denying that. There have been Christian slaves and Christian genocides, and the pain of those people is real and deserves empathy. But... Social justice, despite the fever nightmares of Ted Cruz, is not about the redistribution of power and thus is not a breadline for white people to take their place in whenever they feel entitled to it. And this knowledge, this exclusion, it's uncomfortable. It feels bad. 
It stirs cognitive dissonance. Believe me, someone will write to me about this diatribe to tell me that I couldn't possibly understand what it was like to be a white guy the time they got the smallest ice cream cone at the water park. But it's a discomfort I think it's important white people learn to live with. Because if we do, maybe we'd be a little more eager to solve the inequalities others face rather than focusing on how our own compare.